Hi friends, it's Dana here. Today I'm gonna talk to you all about weather in this book about weather with the cat in the hat. Now weather I find is very interesting and very confusing. I don't know if you've ever heard your parents or your grandparents complain about the weatherman or woman, but I give them a lot of credit because weather has so many variables and what makes it the way it is. In fact, when I moved to Tennessee, I didn't know what to make of the weather because when I was in Wisconsin, the rain would come in big systems and it would just rain and rain and rain maybe all day or maybe just half the day but we knew once it started raining it would probably keep going here in tennessee if it starts raining it might only last for like five seconds in fact i was in a parking lot once and it literally felt like a little rain cloud just let loose right above me kind of like an eeyore with his rain cloud above him <laughs> and it just drenched me for a second and then it was gone and i thought that was the weirdest thing but here in tennessee we live in a cloud forest and rain and evaporation just happens in so many different pockets and it's such a different thing than it was in wisconsin that i'm still trying to get my head around it but it's all wonderful and in this book we're going to hear about different ways that weather works and how weather is different in different places and there's different climates. So here we go, let's read Oh Say Can You Say, What's the Weather Today? It's a Cat in the Hat Learning Library book all about weather by Tish Rabe and illustrated by Estrides Ruiz. Here we go. I'm the cat in the hat, and it's raining, I know. But let's not stay inside. We've got places to go. Where the sunshine is shining, where the warm winds are blowing, where lightning is flashing, where snowflakes are snowing. The weather is changing. Come on, let's get going. First stop is the top of Mount Kakamur Karakaku, <laughs> where the study we study the weather. That's all that they do. Watching the weather helps everyone know what to wear, where to live, and what food they can grow. Pilots check weather when they fly on a plane. Are they flying in sunshine or clouds filled with rain? Corn grows where it's hot. Rice grows where it's wet. Farmers grow what grows best in the weather they get. Meteorologists forecast the weather and say what kind of weather is heading our way. They send weather balloons floating high in the air to measure how hot or how cold it is there. Air temperature affects weather a lot. Thermometers show if it's cold or it's hot. Wind changes weather and we can see why. It blows clouds along and clears rain from the sky. Anemometers measure how fast the wind goes. The wind vane will show you which way the wind blows. On this map of the weather, you'll see it is showing. It's sunny in Get Gret and in Grugel, it's snowing. The strong wind is blowing the snow right towards Gret. Tomorrow, the weather in Gret will be wet. Symbols on weather maps show right away what kind of weather we're having today. This symbol means drizzle and this one means rain. Stars, this means it's snowing. This means hurricane. <laughs> Weather forecasts are important to us. Will we need a jacket to wait for the bus? When clouds form a ring and it circles the moon, sailors know this ring means there's a storm coming soon. A pine cone can forecast the weather. Here's why. It's closed when it's wet, opened up when it's dry. Here is a fact that we cannot explain. Frogs croak a lot more when it's going to rain. There are all kinds of clouds you can see in the sky. Cirrus are light, wispy clouds floating by. These are cumulonimbus and cumulus clouds. Cumulonimbus clouds means there's a storm on the way. You'll see cumulus clouds on a warm, sunny day. When a cloud touches down on the ground, it's called fog. If it mixes with smoke, then the fog becomes smog. A fun way to learn a cloud's shape is to draw it. 
We said, that's a cirrus, the minute we saw it. If you looked inside any cloud, you would see water droplets that bounce all around. If the droplets get close, they will soon join together, get heavy and fall. Then we're in for wet weather. Water droplets are tiny. This fact made us stop. It takes one million droplets to make one raindrop. They fall to the ground, then the sun's energy turns them to water vapor, which we cannot see. Water vapor floats up, forms a new cloud, and then rain falls from the cloud to the ground once again. Guess what they call this? Give it a trichle. The path of the rain is called the water cycle. <laughs> Here are some words that we learned on vacation. Rain, snow, sleet, and hail are called precipitation. Water changing to vapor is called evaporation. Water changing, vapor changing to water is called condensation. Who invented umbrellas? Well, we don't know who, but umbrellas were first made in China. It's true. Out of colorful paper and wood called bamboo, thousands of years ago, they were first made so out in the sun, folks could walk in the shade. When it rained, they put wax on the paper. Here's why. Rain rolled off the wax, which kept folks nice and dry. When the air's warmer than freezing, I'd like to explain water falls from the clouds and it falls down as rain. When air's freezing cold, it's important to know water falls from the clouds, but it falls down as snow. If you magnify snowflakes the way that they are, you will see that each one is a six-pointed star. They are made up of crystals and each one you find is like no other snowflake. It's one of a kind. The desert is dry and the reason is clear. Its rainfall is less than 10 inches a year. Here is a word and we both like to rhyme it. The weather a place has the most is its climate. How do you keep cool when you live in a land that is hot, dry, and dusty and covered in sand? Loose fitting clothes let breezes blow through and light colors bounce the sun rays off of you. Where on earth is it coldest? Meteorologists say Antarctica is freezing cold every day. Land covered in ice and deep drifting snow, the air is so cold that the plants cannot grow. How thick is the ice here? This made us think quick. We are standing on ice 7,000 feet thick. We used a thermometer and now we know in the air it is colder than deep in the snow. In a tropical jungle, it's hot and it's wet. If you go there to visit, you soon start to sweat. The weather is humid, which makes you feel icky. The air's full of water, that's why you feel sticky. Air conditioners help you feel better, here's why. Cold air holds less water, so you feel cool and dry. In a thunderstorm, first you will see lightning flash. Next you'll hear thunder go rumble and crash. To find out how far thunderstorms are from you, Try this easy trick, it's a fun thing to do. Start counting when you see a lightning bolt flash. Stop counting when you hear the next thunder crash. Take that number, divide it by five. When you do, that's the number of miles that the storm is from you. Lightning's electric, one flash is so strong, it could light every light in your house all year long. Thunder won't hurt you, but lightning could so. Here are a few things we would like you to know. Lightning strikes what is tallest. In a thunderstorm, never stand under a tree. If you are out in a field and have no place to go, get as small as you can and then scrunch way down low. In, say inside your car, if there's lightning around, it flows over your car and down into the ground. 
If strong winds are blowing with hard driving rain, you may be in the middle of a hurricane. Winds blow in a circle both night and day, knocking lots of things down that get in the way. Here's a hurricane fact that's a favorite of mine. There can be lots of hurricanes at the same time. So each one gets a name, Andrew, Agnes, or Dora, Lenny, Diana, Mitch, Bertha, or Flora. They each get a name so there's never a doubt which hurricane people are talking about. Hurricanes blow things down, but I learned from thing two, tornadoes blow harder than hurricanes do. A tornado picks up everything it goes by, like a huge vacuum cleaner way up in the sky. It spins like a top twirling round and round, pulling trees, cars, and houses right off the ground. Once in a tornado, a chicken was tossed. She landed safely, but her feathers were lost. It's important to study the weather, it's true, but we cannot control it, whatever we do. The sun may be shining, the sky a bright blue, then suddenly rain will start falling on you. Or the sky may be filled with dark storm clouds and then the sun will break through and shine down once again. You see weather keeps changing, but one thing we know, it makes life exciting wherever you go. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed reading all of that about weather with me. If you get the chance to go someplace new, I think you should try to observe what's different about the weather and see if you can predict what's going to happen next. That's what a good scientist would do. All right, friends, thanks so much for reading with me. Bye.